Salt is almost never just salt. The salt that you eat may be hurting your health, depending on what's actually in it. In this short deep dive, I'm gonna tell you what the salt manufacturers don't tell you about the purity of their products and what might be the healthiest salt for you and your family. The answer might surprise you. Whether mined from the ground or harvested from the ocean, salt is almost never actually just salt, sodium chloride. Minerals, as you're aware from salt marketing campaigns, are found in varying concentrations from every salt that's not made in a lab. So every salt that you eat. Minerals are the least harmful impurity found in salt, but I'll explain later why having any amount of minerals might not even matter in the first place. Another natural, though sometimes unnatural impurity is heavy metals. Okay. <laughs> Unlike with trace minerals, heavy metals do have an impact. The most common of these heavy metals that can be found in salt are lead, the most common, arsenic, cadmium, and mercury, the least common. Likely, these are heavy metals that you've heard of, but you might not be aware of what they can do to you. Both lead and mercury, for instance, impair cognitive function and damage the kidneys, leading to renal dysfunction. Furthermore, lead can cause red blood cells to take up less oxygen and can increase hypertension and heart disease. Probably the worst thing about arsenic is the fact that it can alter gene expression, which contributes to the development of cancer. But it also disrupts cellular respiration, causes oxidative stress to DNA, and can cause neuropathy and cognitive decline. Not very pretty. Like the others, cadmium increases oxidative stress, but it also disrupts mitochondrial function, which can impair cell energy production. It also demineralizes bones and teeth and is linked to lung and prostate cancers. Pretty nasty stuff these four are, but wait, doesn't the dose make the poison? Well, it, it turns out it depends on the individual. Some people experience these symptoms at lower doses than others, and some populations are more at risk, namely children. A National Institute of Health funded study in China showed that even a one microgram per deciliter, or 10 parts per billion, increase in blood level levels was associated with significant rises in anxiety and emotional issues in children. To put that in perspective, that's like taking one pinch of salt and spreading it across one metric ton of potato chips. That is 10 parts per billion. Based on these findings, the study concluded that there is no safe level of exposure to lead for children. But to make things even more complicated, poisoning from heavy metals has less to do with one-off instances and more to do with repeated prolonged exposures. Let me explain. The United States Federal Drug Administration's recommended limit for lead exposure per day is three micrograms for children, 8.8 .8 micrograms for women of childbearing age, and an unofficial 12.5 micrograms grams for everyone else. But based on its own 2014 to 2016 total diet study, the FDA found that children are exposed to between one to four micrograms of lead per day. For adults, it's between 1.6 and 5.3 micrograms. Add on top of that, another one to six micrograms per day from clean drinking water and however much you might get from the environment, just daily exposure, dust and whatnot, one to three micrograms on average. In total, most Americans are getting between three and 12 micrograms of lead exposure per day. And where does this lead go in our bodies? Well, it bioaccumulates. Every heavy metal bioaccumulates, which is to say that more of it enters the body than what the body can process and get rid of. And they're building up continually. Sure, healthier bodies with more robust detoxification systems, think a functioning liver, are better at getting rid of these heavy metals. But in case you haven't noticed, most people are not very healthy. People don't realize how bad this is. And even if you are metabolically healthy, the problem is much worse than you might realize. Let's say you consume 10 micrograms of lead per day as a healthy adult. Using a different analogy for visualization, let's say that you have an Olympic sized swimming pool that is representing your entire body and it is full of water. Adding 10 micrograms of lead to your body would be the equivalent of adding 10 grains of sugar to that pool. Assuming 15% of the lead that you consume is actually absorbed, according to the United Kingdom Health Security Agency, that means 275 micrograms of lead is going to be stored in your bones and organs over a year's time, and it will remain there for decades. 10 years go by and you've accumulated 2,750 micrograms or 2.75 milligrams of lead in your bones and organs. That doesn't sound like a whole lot necessarily, but the worst part about this is that at times of pregnancy, osteoporosis, or even nutritional deficiency, such as in the form of calcium, that lead gets leached out of your bones to cause the issues that we talked about before. And that is just for a healthy individual. So yeah, no amount of lead is safe. And the worse your health, the worse your outcomes are for lead and other heavy metal toxicity. So the bottom line is this. 
we should be avoiding heavy metals at all costs as much as possible, even in our salts. Heavy metal salt contamination is far more prevalent than you might realize, even for your healthy salts. The numbers you're about to see for each of these comes from third-party testing. While none of these samples were found to have any mercury in them, all of them had levels of aluminum, cadmium, arsenic, and lead. However, only the lead was of any significant amount, so that's what I'll focus on here. And for the first one, we have 0.553 micrograms of lead per gram of salt. For Redmond's Real Salt, we have 0.252 micrograms of lead per gram. Baja Gold Mineral Sea Salt, 0.338 micrograms of lead per gram. And for Trader Joe's, Himalayan pink salt 0.181 micrograms of lead per gram of salt. Assuming any one of these is the only salt you eat every single day and also assuming that you consume 9 grams or about 1.5 teaspoons of salt every day which is the average, what we're looking at is these adjusted values that you'd be getting from your salt consumption alone for each. For Celtic, nearly 5 micrograms of lead per day. For Redmond's real salt, 2.3 micrograms of lead per day. Baja Gold, 3 micrograms and Trader Joe's Himalayan pink salt, almost two micrograms of lead per day. Again, lead exposures at levels of less than one microgram per day are known to cause cognitive dysfunction, especially in children. This means that if you are relying on any one of these brands of salt every day for your sodium intake, you're exposing yourself and your family to up to five micrograms of lead per day, just from salt alone. That's the lowdown on heavy metals, but it doesn't stop there. Fine grain or free flowing salts have other additives in them that might not be so great for your health either. For instance, this bottle of fine sea salt that I got from Kroger might look like just plain salt, but it took me several years to find out that there's something else hiding in it. What even is yellow prussiate of soda? Well, its chemical name is sodium ferrocyanide, a cyanide salt. Despite its name, this additive has been found to be safe for normal consumption in salt, so no real big concern there. But what's it doing? In salt. It's an anti-caking agent which helps prevent the clumping of salt, and there are many more like it. Morton iodized salt, for instance, has calcium silicate. Its function is the same as sodium ferrocyanide, however, is not as well studied. It appears safe, except that accumulation in organs is possible, so further long-term studies are needed. Dextrose is another common salt additive, and it's usually added to iodized salt to stabilize the iodine and make it more bioavailable. Let me be clear. This is not actually a bad thing, especially since with the amount of salt that you can expect to eat in a given day being nine grams, you'd only get less than four milligrams of dextrose in that serving of salt. So not really significant in any way. For those same nine grams of salt, however, you're getting about 500 micrograms of iodine, which is more than three times the daily recommended value and about half of the 1,100 microgram daily upper limit. If you're already eating iodine rich foods, such as dairy, eggs, and fish, and you're supplementing your diet with iodized salt, then you could easily push yourself over this upper limit, which can present problems for those with hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. So that's something to be aware of, but it's not in and of itself a negative per se. In the case of supplementing with iodized salt, you probably want to use a mix though of iodized and non-iodized salt to avoid any sort of problems with your thyroid in the long run. As you can see, the purity of salt is on a sliding scale. Salt can be contaminated with nasty heavy metals, can contain additives that may or may not affect your health, and a lot of sea salts contain microplastics. But there's not enough data on that right now for me to report on. So with all this doom and gloom, what's the solution? There are a couple brands which are very low in the aforementioned contaminants and that are free of any questionable additives. The best salt, in my opinion, is Diamond Crystal Flake Salt. Processed via vacuum evaporation, this salt has the highest purity that I have seen in any other salt. In that same third-party testing, this salt was the only one to be free of any lead arsenic or aluminum and have such low levels of cadmium that it wasn't even measurable. The only potential downside to the salt is that it's not high in trace minerals. But what's the point of relying on a salt for trace minerals? Actually, for a salt with the highest trace mineral content, a pink Himalayan salt, it had only 2% of your daily mineral need for two minerals when you consume nine grams of it a day. 2% is not really significant. You're better off getting your minerals from your food food every day rather than trying to squeeze what little some of these salts have and taking on the risks from the heavy metal loads. So yeah, I 
<laughs> there's no other choice for me. If you can't find this in Walmart or a Whole Foods near you, I've put a link down in the description below for you to check it out. Sodium is something that our bodies need every day for basic functioning. And salt is the easiest source of that for us. So don't overcomplicate it. Get the pure salt that you can for you and your family's health. And forget about the trace minerals. Get that from your diet. Thanks.